Hi guys, and we continue playing engagement part. So, we in the previous episode we find out what's going on in for uh, Forbidden Zone. So, and now we need to talk with the um, be faster. Lenny, Lynette, and Fremine. Oh, we also find out what happened with Fremine in under the water on um, that pipes. So let's go. And We're back. we need to decide will we tell them everything we know for the Forbidden Zone or we don't tell them them. Because they are Fatui. A Fatui it's evil. Welcome back. Do you want a cup of tea? No. How can you be so much like Risley, always drinking tea? Huh. Actually, now that you mention it, I just remembered something now. While I was sedated, I could still barely hear two people talking next to me. They were discussing everything, from the leaves, to the water, and even the teacups themselves. Must have been Risley and Sishween. Yeah, I heard one male voice and one female, so it should have been the two of them. I really can't make sense of this place. So, Traveler, Paimon, were you able to learn anything from Risley? Yeah, he explained everything! Very well. Then, would you mind checking your answers against my speculations? Uh oh, this is a hard decision. Lenny sounds like a lot more like his old self. Feeling better now, Lenny? Yeah, I took the time to rest, so I'm feeling a lot more relaxed now. Nobody else is around, and Miss Sijuin is also busy with something or other, so let's just talk here. All right, then I'll posit my theories. I asked myself three questions. Firstly, why was Fremenet affected by the primordial seawater? It was because he dove into the sea. My theory is, the long-lost primordial sea is probably very close to the fortress of Meripede. That's true. Ooh, he's good! He got that right on the first try! That's our Lenny. Secondly, Risley's attitude changed dramatically during the course of our stay here. He ignored us completely at first, then suddenly roadblocked us. Why? I spent quite a long time thinking about this. If he has been monitoring the Fatui since the very beginning, he probably ignored us at first because he was hoping we could find Master Child for him. What's more, the Fortress of Meripede is not part of Fontaine's court system, nor does it report to Udex Nervilet. Risley is basically the king of a no-man's land. As long as the fortress doesn't do anything about Master Child's disappearance, Father can use it, use to, it pressure to pressure the Fontaine, Fontaine authorities. authorities. And while and the while two factions are pitted against each other, Risley will be will free be to move, move between, between the parties, parties of interest. If I had to guess, he probably has something that he's working on himself. It's likely related to the secret of the infirmary, but I just can't think of what it could be. Linnaeus grabs on the big picture of it's amazing you're super smart <laughs> thanks so much then finally there's the last question if risley does have a plan what could it be all i know for now is that his plan probably has something to do with the changing nature of the seawater he's even gotten chloran to help him out ah uh, that can't be the full extent of what he's doing there's probably a secret passageway behind the block in the infirmary, and there's something big in the fortress that most people here never get to see. He has a bargaining chip, and it could be important enough for Father to deal with him directly. I don't have enough information, so I have no idea what his chip might be. But let me guess. You have the last piece of the puzzle. I can't 
can't believe it. Come on, they didn't give us to do this choice. Must see, will engulf everyone, just like the prophecy said. Could Risley have wanted to meet Father to figure out a way to deal with this crisis? If you remember, I once mentioned that Father sees the House of the Hearth as her base of operations, and she truly wants to resolve the crisis. But how could Risley have known that? Or perhaps he didn't know, and just wanted to bring Father over to his side? Which could be why he said he just wanted to negotiate. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I understand your concerns as well, Traveler. I'll figure out a way to pass this on to our Father. No matter what, we're on your side. The two of you have already aided us far too much. We probably wouldn't be standing here right now if not for you. If you ever need anything else going forward, please come to the House of the Hearth at any time. Though you may not share the sentiment, after all that we've gone through together, the three of us basically see you as family now. You have my gratitude. Thank you for protecting Linny when it really mattered. And thank you for sharing the secrets of the fortress with us. We didn't think you were going to do it. Uh, why are you being so formal all of a sudden? Don't mention it. We can work together again if necessary. What was that? Uh, Paimon... Paimon's hungry. Oh, uh... You've done so much already. Go get some food. Alright, then we'll catch you guys another time. Maybe we'll get out from this um, fortress. Finally. So let's take a nice picture. Um. Um, look at the camera. And uh, say cheese. So. We solved this mystery of Ultra's Mirapid, and I hope we will get out from this um, prison, and I hope they will get out us, <laughs> will release me, us, from this fortress. So we need to go some food, and... It's first time. Come on, let's go pick up ours as well. Uh, Traveler and Paimon, uh, over here. Are you here for dinner too, Miss Sijuin? Uh huh. And I'm taking the opportunity to prepare Miss Cloran's dinner as well. Huh? You're right. She's actually sitting in the fortress cafeteria. What would you like to eat? Uh, we can. Choose? Yep, you can. I've already talked to our chef, Mr. Wolsey. It's all on me today, so you can get whatever you'd like. Then I'll have the tasty stuff you have to offer. Then I'll the biggest portion you have offered. Tastes. Me too! Don't forget Paimon! No problem. Just leave it to me. Delicious. Amazing. Feel delish. Deniers. Three dinners. Dinners are the absolute best. Paimon's so happy. Paimon wants to feast like this every day. <laughs> Feeling full yet? How's the food? Delicious. Exquisite. Thank you. Besides the milk, uh, I mean, everything was super delicious. Uh, I'm so glad to see you all so happy. Oh, see the expression on your face just now? The muscle here just moved, which suggests that you're feeling quite relaxed at the moment. Sijuin, 
Do you do this to help your patients or to better understand human beings? A <sighs> bit of both, I suppose. I'm a melazine, which means I'm very different from human beings. I must know what you're thinking if I want to take good care of you. You're really good at taking care of people. Even though you're so short, you still talk and act like an older sister. Really? You're reminded of an older sister? <laughs> That's great to hear. Oh, and what did you mean back in Risley's office? When you said that you were protecting Linny and his siblings as well? Oh, that. I just asked his grace to look out for those children, especially that diver boy. I was getting a bit worried after hearing that something was wrong with the water. Thankfully, Glorand is very strong and managed to save him in the nick of time. His grace also sealed the pipes after Glorand left, to make sure that Linny wouldn't impulsively chase after his brother. Although the path was blocked, we still stationed some guards there to stop anyone from approaching. They were instructed to only open the door once Miss Glorand had returned. Oh, and I was keeping an eye on Mr. Linny as well. We had to press him, but we couldn't allow him to be in any real danger. You were all super considerate and really thought everything through. <laughs> it's just what we do down here at the fortress. At least this has been his grace's style for as long as he's been the leader. Oh, I really wish Monsieur Nervula would come down here more often, too. I feel like he'd like it here, <laughs> with all the darkness and chaos. But that doesn't make sense at all. Isn't... It is hard to imagine Nivellet outside of this office. Get a good night's rest, you two. You both worked very hard. So we can talk with them. Um, the guard. We can talk with Cloran. Okay, Cloran. It's you two. Yes. How's dinner? It's all right. Miss Sijuin really put in a lot of effort. So we heard that Risley invited you to come down to help, and you saved Fremenay too. You sure work super fast. Oh, it was child's play. Still, Paimon didn't know even Champion Duelist could take on side jobs. Oh, and why aren't you eating with Sijuin and the Duke? Won't you get bored eating by yourself? Miss Sijuin was with you, and the Duke has business of his own. Hmm. Actually, didn't Navia say that you went out for dinner with her as well? Yeah. First time in a long time. First time in a long time? So you mean you've gone out to dinner with her in the past? In the past, yes. <clears throat> you seem to be enjoying yourselves here. It's all thanks to Nobelette. It, this is uh, technically a work trip for us. Things will be getting messy at the fortress soon. Don't run around unnecessarily. And she's disappeared. So, I want to get out from here. <laughs> I don't see any reason to stay here any longer. So we need to go upstairs. No, not yet. Something has to happen. I believe. It's not over right until the Dormidorios to rest. Dormitorius to rest. Take it easy. So let's we'll go and rest. And some kind of disaster has to happen here and right now. On the next day. I believe so. Take it easy. Ah, <sighs> so my 
what just happened. Paimon just feels absolutely exhausted now that she's finally relaxed. <sighs> I'm on super sleepy. Are you sleepy too? Yeah, I'm so getting tired. <sighs> oh, baby, Paimon. <sighs> yeah, too big to uh, back for only one Paimon. Wow, she really immediately fell asleep. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, they sleep together. Where is our I mate? Paimon wants seconds for free. Good night. Out of my way! Get out of my way! Yeah. What happened? Why is everyone running? No idea, but something must have happened. Stop asking! Like I told, something has to happen. Uh -huh. Who's yelling? Paimon still wants to sleep. What's that sound? Paimon, wake up. We need to go out and see what's going on. Yeah, Why is everyone running around? Uh, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you no doing? time to explain, mate. Goodbye. Uh, uh, hey, wait! I think we should What's run too. What's wrong too? with these people? They won't even talk to us. They're here! Yeah, there you are! Oh, thank goodness! We came here especially to inform you. Something seems to have gone terribly wrong just now. His Grace is telling everyone to evacuate and get out of here. Lavarune yeah. was saying you two are new here and you don't have many friends, so you might slip through the cracks. Haven't you heard all the stories like that? An evacuation is successfully completed, yet you only find out once you do a head count that one or two people are missing. Wait, weren't you the one who brought that up? Why is it suddenly my idea? Hey, shut up! Okay, whatever. The point is, you should come with us. You said his grace said to evacuate outwards. Yeah, he said to get as far away as possible, upwards and outwards. Then that means that water, whatever happened must have happened down below. Oh, no. Is, isn't that gate at the very bottom? Oh, no. It can't be that thing! Oh, wait, what? What? Hey, where are you going? We have to go find the Duke! You two just go and get out! Go on without us! Hey, hey! Be careful! Attention! Yes. Please evacuate upwards and outwards! Upwards and outwards! If you're already at the topmost layer, then try to move as far outwards as possible. Finally, some action. How long we play? We play 18 minutes, so we have plenty of time. So let's go, Duke. The lift? No. <laughs> They're here. Just like I said. You're just in time, but be ready to run. Hold for a long time. Oh, 
Three, two, one. Come on, good game. Why the hell do I have points? This won't Not hold here. it for long. Find Nuvillette. Tell him the defenses are about to collapse. Then what will happen to you? Until he arrives, we're the last line of defense. <gasps> the gate. How long do you think it'll hold? That depends on us. <laughs> She's the water, he's cryo, cryo, cryo. Traveler, I need you to head to the Opera House immediately. Farina will soon be meeting with the Knave there. You must protect Farina and make sure she doesn't spend too much time alone with her. Okay, you can explain everything else to me later. Will do. You have my sincerest gratitude. So this is the Opera House, maybe. Yes. So, 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 now we need to go and there are gonna be a mission between Furina and the Arlecchino or the father. So we are playing 22 minutes, Fatui are here already. has left instructions. Please follow me. Though I'm sure he's already explained, this should be a mostly cordial conversation unlikely to give rise to violence. But it would be most appreciated if you could protect Lady Farina to the best of your abilities. Farina is an archont. Why she need protection? Oh, our protection. I will do with my best. This meeting. Oh, so you two are the honored guests Miss Farina mentioned. Of course, of course. How could they not attend a meeting such as this? I must always have two or more guests at my dessert table. Otherwise, the occasion would be too lonely and unbecoming of my station. It is my pleasure to make your acquaintance, Traveler. I have heard much of your accomplishments. I am the Knave, one of the eleven Fatui Harbingers. So this is the Knave, the head of the House of Health, Health, and the Lenny sibling father, sibling's father. The sim certainly does not seem easy to deal with. Greetings, please to meet you too. I've already not prepared please. seats for you. Come, sit beside me. Perhaps you two are unaware of how Miss Farina and I do things. You see, we actually recently agreed to get together for tea when we had the time. See this? This is a limited type of confectionery that Miss Farina simply adores. There are only 16 slices sold every day. Here, why don't you and Paimon have a taste? She seems friendly enough, but that can be all there is to her. The knave is forced to be 
reconnect with. I should be very calm, conscious around her. Traveler, what do you think of this cake? It's pretty good, it's quite tasty, and I think Paimon agreed to. That's good to hear. So what child said was on the mark after all. You do share a taste in desserts with Farina and I. While child would have no reason to have said something like that. I wonder how he's doing nowadays. You must have heard, right? He's suddenly gone missing. I'm really worried about his safety, you know. Here's to hoping that he's an excellent swimmer. I have play, faith in his ability. Uh, since we're talking about him, I feel like I should add something. His martial prowess really looked certainly pretty impressive, yeah. Florina looks quite nervous. There must be some kind of uh, bad blood between her and the Nye. Oh. So you're also familiar with his aptitude for fighting, Miss Farina. Oh, right. I almost forgot. Child was subdued by Udex Nuvillette right in front of you. Against ordinary people, my colleague would never be on the back foot. But alas, he just never imagined he'd run into such a person. Hmm. I must express my admiration for Monsieur Nuvillette. I managed to find a few leads on his wear bounds. Hmm. Coming from you, that's not surprising at all. Uh, but I thought you would be happier to hear the news. Of course, but it's still a bit of a shame. You see, I would have been far happier had I received this news somewhat earlier, as you well know. A long time has passed since Child disappeared. Uh, uh, well, in any case, there's no need to worry. We know for sure that Child is still alive. Oh, and just how do you know that? Because, uh, because we found evidence that proved he left the Fortress of Meripede. And where did he go after leaving the Fortress? Oh no, Paimon's statement just left us wide open. The fortress of Meripede lies deep beneath the waves. Unless he pranced right out of the main gate, he must have had to swim for it. Do you have any proof that he surfaced safely? We do not. But there, there was also no evidence that he's been injured or killed. Oh, that is good news at least. His sister Tonya sent a letter to Fontaine not too long ago. Since he was unfortunately unavailable, I picked it up on his behalf. Do you have any idea how he usually writes back to his family? Dear Tonya, your letter made me feel like we were still enjoying our time in Snezhnaya together. I'm currently admiring the scenery on the streets in front of the Opera House. Is it something like that? She's turning up the pressure. I'm not sure if I'll be able to convince her, but I can at least try to dis to distract her from Furina. That sounds good to me, yeah. All letters tend to follow the same few formats anyway, right? As long as the contents are accurate, it doesn't matter so much how it's written or how it's worded. Uh, huh? Hold on. The water in the teacup is shaking. Yeah. <sighs> I suppose this is also a sign of things to come, Miss Farina. Just something new about it. Huh? Uh, I don't quite understand what you're trying to say. Have we entered into the next stage of the prophecy? <sighs> <laughs> My thanks to you both. I will take it from here. <laughs> 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 
sure you don't need a hand? Quite sure. Wow. So, what's your secret, huh? Uh, let me guess. Nah, who knows. Maybe it's just your sense of responsibility. <laughs> hmm. Sounds about right. He is super strong. Day may come when the prophecy is fulfilled and the waters burst forth, but it is not this day. This ancient power could easily obliterate an entire race. A tsunami of fury would unleash endless catastrophe. <laughs> Forgive me for overruling it. All right. Seems like the problem inside has been suppressed. Let me guess. We're safe for now. <laughs> Indeed. But only for now. I win this bet. You owe me a present. <sighs> Very well. It was indeed just as you said. You made a bet? We made a bet on the size of your entourage. Cloran thought you wouldn't come down by yourself. I figured you would have at least brought a few people along for appearance's sake. It appears I underestimated just how confidential the mission was. Shouldn't you have gotten used to confidential missions by now? That's just how the courts operate. So what gift must the loser give? Tea? Hmm. He already has tons of tea in his office. I'm thinking about a set of legal codices. That wouldn't happen to be a dig at my lack of legal awareness, would it? Well, I'm sure His Grace doesn't consider the fortress to be outside the law. I was under the impression the residents of a place like this would be uninterested in the legal codices. <clears throat> that was obviously a joke. Uh, anyway, you've still got some unfinished business to attend to in the overworld, correct? No need to stay here if you have a pressing matter. We all know you can't leave Palais Mermonia for long. Thank you. I hope everything went smoothly with the Fatui Harbinger. <sighs> I must say, we've spent long enough playing house. Miss Farina. As the Hydro Archon, I am sure you understand the exact meaning of the phenomenon we just witnessed. Or should I say, that's what I originally thought. But looking at your expression, was I wrong? And you haven't a clue? What are you trying to say? At this point, I don't think there's any more need to speak as diplomatic representatives. Allow me to speak to you now as just a Fontanian. You know the prophecy by heart, and also that every part of it is being proven true. Yet, here you are, relaxing, drinking tea, and eating desserts as if it's all nothing more than a few stray bugs in your garden. Do you really think that's acceptable? The prophecy's hanging above our necks like a guillotine. Every faction is looking for a way to either avert the disaster or save their own. Even the orphans of the House of the Hearth have devoted everything to saving their homeland. But you 
It beggars belief just how nonchalant and carefree you have been. From the very beginning, you, the god Fosalor, you have utterly failed to take action. You're wrong. I've never ignored the prophecy, nor have I just been passing the time in self-indulgence. Retract your accusation and stop doubting the wisdom of the gods with such absurd conjectures! I am not alone in my doubts, you know. All the children of Fontaine may be harboring the exact same thoughts right now. Oh, great Hydro Archon. How are you going to save them? Save us? How are the people you've sworn to protect supposed to survive in a land that will soon disappear beneath the waves? I have my ways, and I've been working on them for all this time. Even if you look down upon me, you have no right to judge me! Fontaine will be saved. Even... even if I still cannot see the true future right now, as long as I continue on as I am, I will be able to hold my head up high! Farina's not acting like her usual self. She's, she's actually seriously refusing... Refusing them knaves, accusations. She meaning that she says she's not putting on the front. Then I ask you, Miss Farina, just what have you been working on? Where can we see it and what is it doing to help? <sighs> I... <sighs> so, was that all a lie? Or can she really not tell us? She was so full of confidence and confidence. Conviction and confidence just now. But now she's deflated like a puppet balloon. Puppet balloon. My machinations are just like the prophecy itself. They will only reveal themselves at the fated time. It is just that beings like yourselves are unable to perceive them as of yet. Mm, I see. As a god, the proof of your labor always lies beyond prying mortal eyes. Allow me to be so bold as to ask another way. Would it be possible for you to tell us the parts of your plan that are not confidential? Such as your emergency response plan for the impending disaster? Uh, an emergency response plan? Oh, that look in your eyes. Have you not even prepared one of those? The... the emergency response plan is also strictly confidential. Then allow me to jog your memory. Miss Farina, what is the purpose of your oratrice mechanique d'analyse cardinal? And what do you plan to do with the massive amounts of indemnitium that has accumulated over the years? The oratrice? It's just like it appears to be. Hmm. So you also have no idea. If I'm not mistaken, someone's using it to prepare for something. But unfortunately, it would seem that someone is not you, Miss Farina. I first caught wind of this when Linny tried to investigate the Oratrice in the Opera House. You see... Even just getting close to the core contaminated him with an extremely large amount of indemnitium. But even if that had nothing to do with you, then what could you possibly be working on, oh great Hydro Archon? Oh, right. I almost forgot. Eudex Nouvellette is not at the tea party with us today. Miss Farina, I suppose you must have ordered him away to take care of some troublesome business. Ah, uh, yeah, yes, that's exactly right. Please keep it a secret for me. Of course I will. Although, I must say, Miss Farina, you seem quite insecure without the Udax by your side. Oh, very well. Let's stop that conversation here. There are still a few slices of cake left, so please, help yourselves, everyone. 
There's a random topic I can speak about. I don't even know what Nivellet's task was. If I had to guess, he probably went down to deal with the, the su Surgeon Primordial Sea, but uh, can he really deal with it uh, all by himself? And is Purina being truthful or not? Traveler? I heard that you were recently commissioned to handle a few matters on behalf of the Udex. Why don't you take an extra slice of cake? Those who work hard deserve gratitude and praise. You too, Paimon. Uh, thank you. Paimon will take you up on that offer. I'm on super full. That cake was great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it's on my tea table, it must be of the highest quality. Uh, yes, and we must thank the knave for bringing these over as well. You're welcome. I'm sure the cake also felt greatly honored to be featured at Miss Farina's table. And I was merely catering to Miss Farina's tastes, seeking a chance to chat over tea. Mm, it is getting late. Why don't we call it a day? There are still a few matters that I need to take care of, so I must take my leave now. Very well. We'll end it here. Mind seeing me off, Traveler. We could use the opportunity to discuss child before I must be on my way. Of course. Paimon's coming too! Oh, this is the rare opportunity that we can speak with Furina about... <laughs> The tea party turned out to be even more difficult than I'd imagined. Uh, uh, ahem, <laughs> why are you looking at me like that? Is something the matter? If there's nothing urgent, then I shall be retiring for now. Oh, it's, it's a good person to ask about brother, but... She don't want to talk. Okay, sit. And take a little picture. Like a two friends with a cup of tea. Save it. Oh, it's a pity we should do you. Oh, it's not, I believe it's not her apartment, it's her, it's just room for meetings, negotiations, and other stuff, so nothing interesting here. Let's go and talk with uh, Nave. Oh, this is the opera house. I can freely go in and go out? Yes, I can. So this is great. What's behind this interesting? And uh, no, I can't see any button. Oh no. I just need to leave this place. So let's go. Can I shoot Hydro Archon? And what will be? Okay, let's uh, shoot the Hydro Archon. Will she mad or just sit quietly? I believe just she sit quietly. Hi, Purina, it's me again. No, she do nothing. I even can slice her, but she do nothing. Yeah, it's pity, but okay. I don't want to be enemy of our bond. Not if not mention it, I was enemy of Electro Archon. 
And she was very dangerous person. Um, nothing here. Let's go. I'm glad that you were willing to come with me. Of course, child was just an excuse. I have no interest in your dealings with him. That's what Paimon thought! What do you want to say? You lent your aid to the children of the House of the Hearth, as their father. I would like to express my gratitude. There is no need. I didn't think that so what you wanted to talk about. Was there nothing else we want to say? That was all. Formal topics should be discussed in formal settings, and informal topics in informal settings. I know you just returned from the fortress of Meripede. Relax, I have no intention of trying to get anything out of you. Linny, Lynette, and Fremine are still there, and I trust their judgment and abilities. They've all been working very hard and have always done all they can to fight back against anyone who tried to stop them. Especially Lenny. You mean Ridesley. He's a tricky one to deal with. Hmm. It's unfortunate that Lenny's so eager to prove himself that he can't learn to rely on others. Including me. By the way, and you can just consider this a bit of idle gossip, but what's your impression of Farina? Gossip. There was lots of not familiar words, but I didn't want to interrupt gossip. Uh -huh. I have to... You are outside of our disputes, and the freest person in all the Fontaine, able to move around most easily. Allow me to share my perspective with you. And that's everything that happened during the trial. Master Child was declared guilty and immediately transported to the Fortress of Meropede. Didn't he say he was coming here on vacation? Does he not feel an ounce of shame for all the trouble he has caused? Uh, I... I... Forget it. He did give us an opportunity. I will be meeting someone shortly. Do you require help with any preparations? No need. I will take care of it myself. I need to meet with Farina, the Hydro Archon. She is at the heart of Fontaine. But what's fascinating about her is that she often seems more like a celebrity than a working Archon. Oh? Come over here, you little critter, you! You dare to run from me? Stop right this instant! My goal is just to discover the location of the Gnosis. But I didn't expect the chance to approach Farina to be handed to me on a silver platter. This is so easy, it's actually making me a bit suspicious. Anything left unguarded is usually just bait. But no one will blame someone for taking the bait. After all... From the moment it was attached to the hook, the bait is meant to be sacrificed. <laughs> it's just as I guessed in the second before I struck. The Hydronosis is not currently held by the Archon. In fact, this Archon doesn't seem like a god at all. And I sense that she's under some kind of curse. Who are you? trying to do please don't kill me i'm begging you please the fear in her pupils is genuine so perhaps she's not bait after all either way targeting her has lost all meaning hmm. i left the scene with ease nobody came looking for me and nobody could serve as a witness to my near assassination of fosalor I suspect even Verena dares not mention this incident to anyone. Not long after, my informants confirmed what I had guessed. After returning to her quarters, Verena quietly cried alone. She was so scared that she could not sleep that night, 
nor could she even bring herself to eat her cake. There's no doubt that there's something wrong with her. I began to entertain the possibility that she is not the true Hydro Archon. Perhaps Udex Nouvellet is actually the genuine article. I have to find the Gnosis. If the Nouvellet hypothesis is correct, he is probably in possession of it. Alternatively, it might have been hidden in a place that's hard for ordinary people to access. Yes, father. My dear children, please speak. News from the fortress of Meripede. Master... Master Child has gone missing. On top of that, the contacts and guards we bribed at the fortress have all gone quiet as well. Probably the handiwork of that Ridesley. I'm afraid so. This is a good opportunity. The value of a Harbinger is much higher than most would imagine. We now have an excuse to exert diplomatic pressure on the Fontaine authorities. Set up a meeting for me. I would like to meet the Hydro Archon and Udex Nouvellet. Oh, and I have an additional mission for you three. Yes, yes Father. Father. Tartaglia's disappearance was not a part of my plan, but I can use it to make a breakthrough. With this as my excuse, I can ask for an official audience and continue my investigation of Farina and Udex Nouvellet. The initiative belongs to the House of the Hearth. My wish to investigate the Fortress of Meripede will be a front. Linny and his group will be responsible for the actual intelligence gathering. Wow. You should know the rest. Lenny's group is quite close to you, so they wouldn't have hidden anything from you. I believe, if I, my guess, I don't insist on it's a true. Maybe the Nivellet made those tea from the primordial sea and the Hydro Furina is caused by primordial sea by drinking the tea. Maybe. You, you attacked the Hydro Archon? It wouldn't mean anything, even if you shouted it from the rooftops. After all, even Farina herself is still pretending that nothing of that sort ever happened. Uh, all right. I've now had two chances to enjoy tea with Farina. I have to say, the leadership of Fontaine is even more inscrutable than I had imagined. I once surmised that Udex Nouvellet must be the Hydro Archon, but now, that doesn't seem right to me either. How did you come to that conclusion? I am a servant of Her Majesty the Tsaritsa. Over my years of service, I've learned how a real Archon conducts and carries themselves. Whether Udex Nouvellet or Farina, neither fits the bill. It's hard to imagine either of them as the Archon. Of course, that is all just how I feel. Gut feelings often do not require justification. It is, however, quite amusing to me that after all my years working in intelligence gathering, I've come to realize I am at a complete loss regarding the identity of the god of the land of my birth. Don't you think Fontaine is quite intriguing? A catastrophe looms, yet many secrets have yet to rise to the surface. <sighs> it looks like Fontanians will have no choice but to save themselves. Ultimately, though, one must survive in order to do anything else. Should the Should need arise, I would, I would be help. happy to cooperate with you. You don't need to commit to anything right now, of course. I have a feeling that the situation will continue to evolve. And as your name is often connected with noble deeds, I'm sure we will work together. Something. Nibelet. He, he certainly returned like quickly. Off. You must want to catch up with each other, so I'll leave you to him. Hmm. Nibelet, is it over? For now, yes. But this issue will prove quite thorny in the long term. I am concerned that sooner or later the prophesized events will occur. Thank you for protecting Farina. 
Maybe ask what happened down there. Mm. To put it simply, I used my power to force back the primordial sea and reseal the sluice gate. As for what happened on your side? Hmm. So as expected, the knave has turned up the pressure on Farina. She's trying to feel her out, though I'm still unsure as to her motives. Can I ask you some questions? Permission granted. You have enough power to force back the primordial sea. Doesn't it mean you have some deeper connection with the Hydro Archon? Whoa! It can't be that you're the real Hydro Archon, right? But that's just a speculation on our part, though. <laughs> you can't tell us? Then... Then that's okay. We can talk about something else. We won't try to force you. <laughs> you guys in Fontaine are super strange. He definitely... Maybe he's Hydrophon, but... Maybe he is just familiar. If by the phrase, you guys, you are referring to Farina and I, then although I'm not sure just what you are trying to imply, I must clarify that I do not share her positions on a multitude of topics. What did you sense in the Fortress of Mirapid? Did you manage to protect those need to be defended? I believe so. The Fortress has a long and complex history. It has seen much grief and suffering. And now, another catastrophe will soon be upon us. I mourn this turn of events. Huh? Why is it raining all of a sudden? The clear sky suddenly filled with dark cloud. The rain become heavier. Light rain soon grow to a down upon. And just moment before, Nevelet had just mentioned his sense of grief. Thinking back to that legend there and, and what Freminet said. It said that a um, dragon of water once rise in Fontaine. Every time it swept, it swept, it webs, webs. Vipus. Okay, he is like a toad. He is familiar. The skies will cloud up and power up rain. What Nivellet? Wait, Nivellet, you can't be. And you may be closer to the truth than you think. Oh? And what are you thinking? He is the dragon sovereign of the water. Please do not be so surprised. <sighs> Farina? Nuvalet! Nuvalet, are you listening? Ah, my apologies. We were just guessing randomly. We didn't guess right, did we? You're not actually the Dragon Sovereign of Water, right? Well, if you don't want to confirm or deny... You guessed correctly. I sincerely hope you'll be able to keep this a secret for me. Uh, right, of course. We'll definitely help you keep it a secret. There's still something Paimon wants to ask you, though. Please, go ahead. Well, if you are the Dragon Sovereign of Water, and you were able to force back the Primordial Sea from the fortress, then since Fontaine's prophecy is all about seawater, couldn't you just use your power to solve the crisis? None of the currently living Dragon Sovereigns in the world, myself included, possess our full Dragonhood. They say that when the first Usurper arrived on Tivat, they seized a part of the Dragon's power. Today, that stolen power is the basis of the Archon's authorities. There are seven elemental Archons and seven matching Dragon Sovereigns. The Dragon Sovereign of Water who lived through that era perished a long time ago. As their successor, I know far less of that part of our ancient history. In any case, 
I believe I will not be able to do much unless the Archon disappears and returns their elemental authority to me. Given the status quo, however, I would recommend finding another way to deal with the prophecy. Oh, so even you can't solve it. I still have some urgent matters to attend to at my office. If you have any more questions regarding ancient history, you are welcome to discuss them with me at a later time. Ah, uh, please go right ahead. There's a place that Paimon wants to go to. Traveler, why don't we pay another visit to the Fortress of Meripede? Paimon is a little worried. See you later, Nuvulet. We'll see you another time. Take care. Wow, this was an amazing episode. So we finish and we can a moment's the percent written okay written to the prison we'll learn more about everything situation situation so not interesting at all for now so we can collect this um commissions and uh, this guide still can't why? Okay, doesn't matter. So, this was quite interesting episode. We will find out. We we'll find out lots of interesting information about quest, lore, and much more. So, thank you guys for watching, and see you next time. Bye.